Cheers to you guys. Friday night, last call. We are talking final order cutoff books for this coming Monday, October 28th, and it's coming up. What's going on guys, Brian Silverman's Comics. This is the Last Call Show. We are talking pre-FOC, like we said just a minute ago. And we're gonna give you our top 10 picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday night, October 28th, 2019. These aren't speculation books. There might be some spec play in there, but this is readers, good art, our picks, well-rounded for the comic hobby for final order cutoff. But before we get into that, as always, my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo, is with us once again. What's going on, Jack? Oh, happy to be here, Brian. You know, it's a great time to be sitting here drinking our adult Kool-Aids and talking comics. And this is my favorite show because we get an opportunity to alert the community on books that they get an opportunity to order before final cutoff. Make sure they lock those orders in, get the best possible price, and do right by their LCS by helping them predict orders. Right. Real quick, before we get into that list, we got kind of an important announcement to make. Those of you that watch this channel may or may not be aware that we are friends with another YouTube community called The Comic Core. I was able to hang out there with Baltimore. Bunch of group guys. Like I said before, they are the YouTube comic book Wu-Tang Clan because they all have their own channels, but they come together to form that Comic Core and we always talk about this channel is based on integrity and community, not just the Simple Man's community, but the YouTube community as a whole. So we need to talk about this. There's a Comic Core member in need. This guy, Paul, who, owes, who also goes by Midwest Comic Man. He has a young daughter, just had open heart surgery. So we have a comic book person in need. They have a GoFundMe up right now. Trying to recoup some of those expenses. Anyone that has kids, this is like one of the worst things you possibly go through. You know me, I have an eight and six year old boy, so I can empathize in my mind how I would react to a situation like this. So there's a GoFundMe link in the description of this video. Also, if you guys go over to Comic Core channel, which I'll put a card up here right now, that if you click on that, it'll take you over to their channel. They have a couple videos up there about the situation as, as well. I don't want to give up too much information because one, it's 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 a kid, it's someone in need, so some people can be kind of picky about that. Just want to bring to everyone's attention, we got a comic member in the community that could really use some help right now. So check that link in the description. Also check out Comic Course channel, because not only that, they are also going to be doing an auction this weekend to help raise funds for some of those medical bills and everything else that arises from that to help this family out as well. So I don't want to take up too much time on that, but this is really important help someone out in the comic community so not to make the mood too somber but we felt that was something that needed to be brought up and with that being said we're going to roll into the pre-foc list starting with captain marvel number 12. now this is going to have four different covers for it there's the regular cover there's an nhyak lee connecting variant there's a 2099 variant as well as a 1 in 25 incentive variant yeah, so this is one that I think a lot of speculators in particular have been anticipating. We've been waiting for this dark Captain Marvel kind of turn. We saw at the end of issue 11 where it appeared that Star kind of changed a bit and was getting kind of uh, uh, a little bit of uh, new powers per se. But there's a lot of talk about Infinity Stones. So we're going to have to wait and see where that goes. That's where the reader buzz comes in. Um, the cover art on issue 12 is fantastic. Whether it's we're talking the Mark Brooks regular cover or that Yoon 1 in 25 variant. And you know Inhyuk Lee is going to bring it with the connecting variant as well. Um, really, this book is hitting on all cylinders. That's why we're leading off with it. It's, it's kind of that no-brainer FOC book. I think every collector is going to want this book, whether you want to read it whether there's some cover art that connects with you, whether you feel like this is a book you want to speculate on, I really think that this is going to cover all bases. Um, so Captain Marvel number 12 is definitely one to keep an eye out for. It's one to be on the lookout for. And it's leading off our list right here on The Last Call Show. Right, and we're aware that a lot of people are 
aware of this title, but the good thing about pre-FOC is a lot of times if you get those orders in, you get a little of a bit of, get a little bit of a discount by getting a pre-order in rather than half unless you get the pool box discount. Who knows? Check with the LCS, but there's a lot of discounts offered a lot of times when you pre-order the book ahead of release. Absolutely. Batman White Knight presents Victor Von Freeze. We were just talking about Dr. Freeze the other night on the Bolo show, right? Absolutely. Yeah, long-term play of the week. Looks like DC's heavy on Dr. Freeze right now, but this is kind of a different story. You know how that Batman White Knight stuff goes. It's almost like that Elseworlds type story, but I'm really interested in reading this. But Tell us about this book, Jack. Yeah, this is a $5.99 MSRP one-shot coming from Sean Murphy from that Curse of the White Knight um, kind of universe. Uh, this story takes place as the birth of Bruce Wayne is literally happening in the page. Um, Vi Victor Von Freeze is able to, or Victor Freeze is able to save the life of uh, no Martha Wayne, um, is able to save the life of Bruce Wayne, of course, the eventual Batman. And in the process, he's telling Thomas Wayne kind of a story of his father figures. One, um, uh, Nazi, a member of the SS, um, Baron Von Fries, and one, uh, a Jew um, during the time of this whole, you know, obviously upheaval. And uh, he's kind of giving him this this story of how like cryotechnology came to be. And it's this is a kind of from Dr. Free's perspective story. So it should be real interesting. Again, this is one of those books, Brian, we're talking about really doesn't fall into any sort of speculation play. It's an Elseworlds story. It's a one shot. It's really a perspective driven story, but it's it's different. It's something different from DC Comics than you're usually going to see. We're talking about a period piece. We're talking about, you know, World War II era. Um, you know, we're talking, um, obviously, you know, an SS type story. Um, but you're getting a perspective from Dr. Freeze that really, I, as I talked about on the Bolo show, kind of humanizes him because he's talking about his, his two father figures who obviously come from completely different worlds. I'll tell you, just from reading the solicit, though, this is one of those books that I kind of hope DC makes one of those animated movies about. Here we're talking Annihilation Scourge Alpha number one. This is supposed to be the book that's going to set up the big December event for Marvel Comics. It's got four different covers for it. We have that regular cover. There's an Alex Garner variant, an Ario Olivete cover, as well as a Ron Lim variant. As Brian mentioned, this one shot is going to lead into a future event, but it's not even just about the event that it leads into. It's about the event that it's referencing from the past. Well, I'm talking Annihilation. Annihilation was one of the most popular Marvel cosmic crossover events of the last like 10 years. And it is the event that eventually gave us the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Without that event and the popularity of the Guardians of the Galaxy team featured within that event, I don't think we would have ended up with the Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU. And this book features some real popular fan favorite cosmic characters. I'm talking Silver Surfer, I'm talking Richard Ryder Nova, and of course, Better Ray Bill himself. This one isn't really a spec pick. It's more of a reader buzz pick, but it's one that can really sharp speculators can pay attention to read and kind of get an eye for what is going to be coming down the pike. I agree. When I saw the cover looking through the final order cutoff list, I got that feel. I got hit in the feels because it instantly brought me back to the earlier Annihilation books. So this is one that we definitely both of us agreed on, both of us looking forward to this, and that's why it's in this video. Now you know the FOC list wouldn't be complete if we sprinkled a couple indies in there. Here we're talking Boom Studios with Heartbeat number one. This is gonna have the regular cover, but there's also that FOC variant, right Jack? Right, and that's the thing is Boom likes to do this. They drop these variants the last second. They call them the FOC variants. They get put out right before FOC. And we're noticing a common trend, Brian, with these FOC variants. They are 
fire and you don't have a long window to order them and that's one of the beauties of the last call show is we're here to notify you about some books you may not be aware of it's funny you mentioned about those foc variants being fire because they're getting a lot of great artists the one for this one is actually Mirka and dolfo and the good thing about this we talked about faithless before that one still a great story the attention's kind of died down on it but this one has the writer maria lavette which I probably said that name wrong, but has that faithless writer in it as well. We read the solicit for this. Love this book. Wouldn't you agree, Jack? Yeah, you know, this one is kind of a, a story of kind of torn high school romance. Uh, kind of a girl who's paying attention to kind of this popular guy, but she all of a sudden she notices that he is feasting on blood. And she doesn't know how she feels about this. In one sense, you know, she got the judgment of what's going on. But in another sense, she likes the attention. So will she follow him? Will she kind of stand up against him? You've got to check out this book to find out. These kind of stories are hot right now. And like we said, that cover art on the FOC variant is absolute fire. Right. And you can see on the cover, it's got a big endorsement right there from Brian Azarello. And I mentioned that Maria Lovett's writing it, but she's also doing the art on this as well. Back over tomorrow again, we have 2099 Alpha Number One, written by Nick Spencer. This is actually going to have four different covers. You have the regular Patrick Gleason cover. There's an artist variant, but there's also an Arthur Adams connecting variant, as well as a Ryan Stegman incentive variant. Well, Brian, you mentioned earlier that something gave you the feels. Nothing gives me the feels like 2099. This is my childhood right here. And we with this one shot, this is what these last few Amazing Spider-Man issues have been leading to. We're talking 80 years ago, the Marvel Universe was born. 80 years from now, it will die. The future is in peril. The events of Amazing Spider-Man have been leading to this. Something is happening in 2099 that spans Nueva York and beyond and will shape the official Marvel future forever. This is not a drill. And this is not the only 2099 issue we're getting releasing with this FOC. So if you're all in on this 2099 rebirth, also pay attention to Amazing Spider-Man 34 releasing this same week, which will be on FOC this same time, as well as Fantastic Four 2099 number one. Right. You were talking about the feels for the 90s. I actually talked and I'm highly of. Just a few years ago, that Peter David run on Spider-Man 2099 with those Francesca Mattina covers. That was one of my favorite runs. I actually always harken back to that. I enjoyed that run a lot better than the current Spider-Man run that was going on at the same time, the Dan Slott run. I'll take Peter David over Dan Slott any day of the week. But yes, we're getting that 2099 back for Marvel, and it's coming this FOC. Back over to DC for a second. We're talking about that one shot Tales from the Dark Multiverse Infinite Crisis number one. What do you like about this book, Jack? Well, first off, it comes from one of my favorite writers, James Tinian IV, who is soon to be the writer of the Batman series. Um, secondly, I really enjoyed Infinite Crisis as a series. Uh, I remember it was one of kind of those crossovers that actually hit well with me and kind of gave a voice to the Blue Beetle. And this one isn't about introducing the Blue Beetle uh, and, and of his role in Crisis. This time, the solicitation says he is the Crisis. And this Dark Universe stuff has been really popular. Uh, the, the Nightfall Batman one-shot did very well. I expect this one to be popular. Probably not as popular. Batman tends to carry a bit more weight. But these Dark Universe books are extremely popular with readers. They have them buzzing. Uh, I think they're here to stay. A lot of one-shots coming with this week. But at the same point, getting some good reads out of them. There's a lot of one shots, but it seems like a lot of times they go to the dark. You know, when they went dark or they go metal, there's a lot of one shots that came out of those as well. So I'm always yeah. interested to pick these up. At least it's MSRP's $5.99 on it. Pre order, probably get a little discount on that. But these are always good reads, in my opinion. So that's another reason why we have it in this video.
from IDW. We're going to have Glow vs. the Babyface number one. This is going to have three different covers. You have a regular Veronica Fish cover. There's a Nicole, I'm not going to say the last name cover, but what we like on this, or what I like, I'm not going to speak for Jack, that 1 in 10 incentive variant by Catherine Nodet. Absolute fire. Tell us more about the book, Jack. Yeah, well, you can speak for me. That noted book cover is fire, but that's not why I like this book. I like this book for the co-writers. First off, the co-writers are Amy Garcia and AJ Mendez. And if those names are at all familiar to you, it's because they're well-known outside of the comics community. Amy Garcia is one of the stars of the hit Netflix television series, Lucifer. She plays that CSI tech, kind of goofy, cute character. And AJ Mendez is better known by her ring name, AJ Lee, former WWE Divas champion, one of the longest reigning women's champions, and really kickstarted the women's revolution in pro wrestling. Um, she's also the wife of CM Punk, who's my favorite wrestler, who's written comics, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not here to talk about CM Punk. We're not hijacking it with those CM Punk chants. Instead, we're talking about AJ Mendez, who is making her kind of her comics debut here. She's a big time comics fan. Um, has written some hit books, best-selling books, and is now bringing her talents to comics. And she's talking about a topic that she knows well. GLOW stands for Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. It's a popular Netflix series, and it was a popular wrestling promotion back in the 80s. And, and you know, before we had this kind of female-driven, uh, you know, time of prominence in pro wrestling that we have today, where we have women headlining WrestleMania, uh, there was a time when kind of women weren't getting that attention, and, and that's when Glow was popular. So while it may seem a bit outdated, it is kind of part of the story of the rise of the female professional wrestler. It's a hit TV show, and this is a story that exists kind of within the universe, but outside of that show. So if you love the show, if it was, a, it was if it's a show that's popular in your household, I think you're gonna like this series. Uh, it'll kind of add to the to the series that you're already enjoying. Um, I'm excited for it, as you can tell, and I know Brian is as well. So, yeah, I'm a fan of that Catherine Note at 1 in 10 Incentive variant, fan of GLOW. But speaking of variants, Jack, you have a pretty big announcement to make about some variants as well, don't you? Right. We've talked about uh, CBSI and comicbookinvest.com and kind of our work in promoting and developing the CBSI exclusive variant program. And we have some variants that are live right now on comicbookinvest.com. Hit that variant tab, and we have Heist, How to Steal a Planet from Vault Comics, which is now live for pre-order. It's $11, $1 going to the American Cancer Society. Um, awesome homage for Eternals number 1 from 1976 by Jack Kirby. First time that that book has ever been homaged, and we've got it right there on comicbookinvest.com. And we've still got copies of that Mad Cave Studios Woven Heart number one variant, that kind of monster hunting team led by Van Helsing, which is also features an homage of the first appearance of Blade in Tomb of Dracula number 10. We've got two covers there. We've got the standard trade dress cover for $17. And we've also got the two pack for $50, which features that extremely limited Virgin variant where there's only 50 available to the public. And those are available right now on comicbookinvest.com. Hit that variant tab and check those out. Um, we've put a lot of work into that. We're excited to partner with those two uh, publishers. And you've seen those books featured right here on the last call show previously. So go ahead and check those out now. Right. And we'll put a link to those also in the description of this video so you can check it out there as well. Moving on. Back over to Marvel, we get Deadpool number one again. I don't know how many times we've gotten Deadpool number one, but we're getting it another time. This time we have Kelly Thompson as author, and the interior art and regular covers by Chris Pachalo. But we also have variant covers from David Finch, Rob Liefeld himself, Carlos Gomez, Deadpool number one. Another one. What do you think? Well, first off, to answer your question, this is volume eight. So this is one of those series that's that Marvel is frequently rebooting as a cash grab for number one. So 
one of the things people appreciate about this show is we also like to let you know where maybe you shouldn't sink your money speculation wise. This is one of those ones I would be very careful. Now, solicitation is intriguing. Deadpool's newest mercenary job has him going after the King of Monsters who has claimed a new kingdom for his monstrous subjects on Satan Island. But you know what they say when you come for the king, you better not miss the Merc for with the mouth. Finds himself neck deep in political intrigue, monster law, and monster hunter out for blood. Um, I like it. it. Sounds different. It's a little bit different for a Deadpool story. It's one I'll, I'll, I'll check out to read. Um, but aside from catching some like immortal Hulk type reader buzz, which we've really never seen on Deadpool, if we're being really honest, um, this is one of those series that gets rebooted all the time. People get really excited for. A lot of people kind of sink money into. You're going to see a bunch of store variants. And they don't really turn out to be anything, hence why they get rebooted and we're on the eighth volume. So it's one of those things like we like to caution the community and say, you know, if you're a new speculator or a new investor and you're paying attention to this and you're sitting there going, well, what's hotter than Deadpool, man? Everybody loves Deadpool. Deadpool doesn't always equal secondary market success, not at this point. So um, if that solicit intrigues you, check it out for a read. I know I will. Um, if you're a Deadpool uh, kind of completionist collector, God bless you because you have a lot of work to do. But if you are looking from an investment standpoint, Mr. Bolo's take, probably pass on this one. This is the title whenever it comes out. It never garners a lot of buzz, but whenever they put out a new miniseries for it or any type of title related to it, I'm buying it up because it's one of my favorite, favorite franchises. And we're talking about He-Man and the Massive of the Multiverse number one. You got that regular Enhiak Lee cover, which a lot of people keep telling me, hey, are you on the cover of that? I don't think so. But you also have that regular price variant by Dan Fraga as well. Yeah, that Dan Frogger variant is fire, but you got to admit that In Huckley cover looks like Brian with the bowl cut for sure. I'm all in for that one. But this story actually seems kind of interesting. We get a little anti He Man story, um, you know, the scourge of anti uh, Eternia, and he's coming for everybody that we love from the He Man story, the He Man saga. And I think this is going to be an exciting story for uh, He Man and Masters of the Universe fans. But I also have to put in there. A little bit of speculation. I, not that I think that this series is going to be something that really blows up. I think it's going to be popular with people like Brian and myself who are Masters of the Universe fans. But He-Man and Masters of the Universe is on the rise. We've seen a uh, rebooted toy line coming out. We've seen a toy line collaboration with WWE and pro wrestling on the way. And we've also seen a Kevin Smith animated anime uh, coming to Netflix very soon. And I think that all of these things combined have a good, solid bit of momentum behind He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I don't think this comic series is going to necessarily pay off for that, but I think it's another kind of pebble on the pathway to some success for He-Man and Masters of the Universe. So that's something to pay attention to. Yeah, one thing I like is it's full He-Man Masters of the Universe miniseries. It's six issue mini, but finally it's full of them. We don't get the crossover with Thundercats like we've had before and Justice. It's all He-Man and I'm all about it. And the last book we have to talk about tonight, finishing up this epic, epic miniseries from Donny Cates. We are talking about Absolute Carnage number five. And Marvel can't let it go with just a couple covers. They got a bunch of covers including artists Greg Land, John Tyler Christopher, Paolo Rivera, Ron Lim, and Kyle Hotz. Jack, I don't think anyone's enjoyed this series more than yourself. I know you're a huge Venom, huge Carnage fan. I've enjoyed the storyline, but this is something that's right in your wheelhouse. Are you, how excited are you to see number five come out? Well, I got to tell you, Brian, I'm really excited, but I'm also kind of bummed because I've really enjoyed reading this. So this is one of those ones where it's like when you're binging something on Netflix and you kind of get to the end and you you feel that almost show hole coming up, right? Where when it's done, it's like, man, what am I going to go to next, right? It's been the most consistent read that I have had uh, month in and month out. So I'm excited for the issue for sure. The solicitation, it's as quick and easy to read as possible. It says Venom and Carnage to the death. 
Now, if that doesn't get you hype and excited, <laughs> I don't. I really don't know what else you need if you're a symbiote fan. Um, obviously, now if we're talking speculation, a lot of people are really kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with Dylan Brock. Are we going to see it in this issue? Are we going to see it in Venom 19? Are we going to see it in Venom 20? Um, are we going to see it in that uh, Good Son one shot that we've got coming out? Who knows? But that's not what this is about for me. I, I know there's a lot of variants and there's a lot of cool ones. I really like that Codex variant. But for me, this is really all about the read. Donny Cates has killed this miniseries. You and I have talked about this being like a miniseries for the generation, to be honest with you, for this kind of era of comics. Um, and I really feel strongly that that's what this is. Um, and I think that He's got to deliver on this last issue, but I really, I have so much faith in Donny Cates. I have no doubt that, that he's going to, and that this is going to be a killer issue. I'm excited to see where this is going to turn out. And um, I'm anticipating a character death. It says it right there in the solicitation, and that's what I'm anticipating. Yeah, if you're watching this video, let us know in the comments. Is this one of those issues that you're excited to read? Have you been frustrated waiting to see what's going to happen? I'm excited, but I know Jack's super excited. But then again... Let us know what your thoughts are. You're talking about Netflix shows ending. There's nothing worse than watching a Netflix show. And instead of getting there to play the next episode, it's recommending some other show because you've reached the end of it. And then you start going, what the crap? So that's our top 10 picks. But as always, Jack is hitting us with those additional prints that are also hitting FOC this Monday night. All right, we just got a few Late printings this week, we've got Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel Hellmouth, number one from Boom Studios, the fourth printing. We've got the Mark, number one, recently optioned, the second printing. Marvel Comics has Amazing Spider-Man 31, the second printing. And they've also got Doctor Doom, number one, the second printing. So we got a simple list on Simple Man's Comics. But as we always say, if you want to see that full FOC list, not just comics, but they got trading cards. They got toys hitting FOC. That full list is going to be on simplemanscomics.com. You can head over there right now. It has the diamond ID, every, all the information that you need to hand to your LCS. To get those orders in before Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's going to bring us to the end of Last Call tonight. So I salute you. My beer has been magically refilling on me. Best type of beer. It's like Thor over there. But remember, guys. Help Paul from Comic Core out. His daughter just had open heart surgery. Link to the GoFundMe is in the description of this video. If you can't help out, prayers, every little bit will help. The guy needs a lot of support. And make sure you head over to Comic Core's YouTube channel. They got a bunch of more information there. They're also, again, they're running an auction this weekend to help support those medical bills. But Jack, you get the last word. Well, again, head to comicbookinvest.com. We've got the link in the description with our two new exclusive variants. But more importantly, thank you, Simpleman's Comics family, for checking us out. We hope that we were able to help you out with your next FOC order. Let your LCS know. Get those orders in. And cheers. Cheers.